Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Daily Race. It's Saturday morning. I uh, switched up the colors behind me, and I'm not sure if I'm liking it. Kind of the green, yellow. Anyways, it's Saturday, and you'll probably see a different color tomorrow, but that's okay. That's not why you're here. You're here because you're starting your day with the Lord, even on a Saturday morning. Every day belongs to him. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. Man, let's get going. We are in the book of 2 Corinthians. And we are, uh, Paul is um, challenging the church there in Corinth. He's teaching just lots of practical stuff. And today we're going to get to a section on giving. And really the area of giving as it relates to spiritual growth. So uh, let me just read what's going on here and... uh, We'll stop and talk about it afterwards, all right? It says this. Now, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, what God in his kindness has done through the churches in Macedonia. They are being tested by many troubles, and they are very poor. But they are also filled with abundant joy, which is overflowed in rich generosity. So he's making that connection. Abundant joy to rich generosity. The fact that what God's done in their lives, the natural result is they want to give to others. For I can testify that they gave not only what they could afford, but far more, and they did of their own free will. They begged us again and again for the privilege of sharing in the gift of the believers in Jerusalem. So the believers in Jerusalem are going through extreme persecution during this time. Uh, Many of the church, this is kind of the time when many of the church leaders are being uh, martyred or being persecuted there. So plus there's a famine going on and uh, just a lot of suffering in Jerusalem. So many believers from all over kind of the region are sending support to Jerusalem um, with the expectation that anyone that was going through suffering would get support from other churches. So this isn't just a, hey, we just lift these ones up. No, we're the body of Christ. We're helping each other out. They did even more than we had hoped for their first action was to give themselves to the Lord and to us just as God wanted them to do. So that their first action was to give themselves to the Lord. So that's uh, a spiritual growth thing that's taking place, then the result is generosity. So we have urged Titus, who encouraged your giving in the first place, to return to you and encourage you to finish this ministry of giving. Since you excel in so many ways, in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge, your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act. I'm not commanding you to do this, but I'm testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of the other churches. So it's just saying, here's what I'm seeing God doing in the hearts of other believers. Uh, You guys are just, there's no reason why this shouldn't take place there. You guys love God. You have spiritual gifts, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, God will be leading you towards this as well. So encourage that. Let that grace of giving go. The example by the other churches. And then he gives another example here. He says, He says, you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you could be made rich. So the example, first of all, set by God. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. So God is a generous God. Uh, The act of salvation and reconciliation is a generous gift given to us by God. And then finally, here is my advice. It would be good for you to finish what you started a year ago. Last year, you were the first who wanted to give, and you, and you were, were the first you were the first who began doing it. Now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed at the beginning be matched by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly. And give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Of course, I don't mean your giving should make life easy for others and hard for yourselves. I only mean that there should be some equality. Right now you have plenty and can help those who are in need. Later, they will have plenty and can share with you when you need it. In this way, all things will be equal. As the scripture said, those who gathered a lot had nothing left and those who gathered only a little had enough. All right, so this passage here, Paul connects giving generosity to a spiritual act. As they're growing in their relationship with God, the gift of generosity should be growing. And I think what's also pretty apparent here is they started off on this project. They started, um, they were excited about being generous, excited about helping this church. But what happened? Why did it stop? Well, that's what they've been dealing with. Division stopped. Sin in the church stopped it. Uh, Distraction stopped it. 
they get caught up in, in moving up the social ladder and places of prominence and arguments about spiritual gifts. And they just got their eyes off Jesus. That was kind of the big point of 1 Corinthians, right? Was that you've taken your eyes off Jesus. You, you're talking about different foundations and who's your leader and who you're following, all this stuff. And you forgot that it's all about Jesus and growing and pursuing a relationship with him. They started off that way. As they were growing and pursuing Jesus, this act of generosity was just a natural outpouring of what was happening in their lives. But once they got distracted, once they got divided, once sin entered the camp, all of a sudden that, that gift of generosity waned. Uh, they, they weren't focused. That wasn't the natural outcome. Generosity is not the natural outcome of sin. I think you just put it that simple, right? So this, this gift of generosity, this growing, uh, this is a challenge for all of us, that we can grow in all of these different areas of our life, and we should. We should grow in, in knowledge about God. We should grow, our, our character should change. We, our attitude should become more and more like Jesus. We should become more obedient. We shouldn't struggle with maybe tripping up over the same sin over and over again. Eventually, we develop things like self-control because the Holy Spirit living inside us. And Paul is just firmly placing generosity as one of those things. As you excel in all of these different graces of God, excel also in the grace of giving. It's the natural outcome of the Christian life. Now, I know so many of you out there uh, watching The Daily Race, you love to be generous. Like this is, this is part of, of your spirituality, uh, to, to give the, some of your first and best, to give to people in need, um, that you see this direct connection between what God gave you and what you want to give and make available to others. And, and that's awesome. Like today should be an encouragement for you. Uh, but maybe you're here today and this is an area you need to grow in. Well, how do we grow in each area? We ask God to help us. And we, we, we identify it through his word. It's like, okay, maybe I wasn't aware of this area. Now I know. God, help me to take a step forward. And we do that by focusing on Jesus, growing more and more like him every day. And the, the natural response will be to grow in this area. All right. Well, hey, we're going to... Take a moment, we're gonna pray. Hey, I would ask for a personal prayer request today. My, my dad has been struggling with COVID for the last uh, last week or so here. He was at home, just kind of trucking along, but uh, it got a little bit worse the last couple of days, so he's in the hospital. He's gonna be there for five days with their uh, antiviral uh, treatment they do. So super grateful for that, super grateful that uh, so much progress has been made in the last year on how to treat COVID and the procedures that, that bring people to health and that's so grateful to our, to our medical community and how, how well they're taking care of him. Um, but I would ask for you just to pray, pray that, that God would heal him, um, pray that God would just be with him. This is like so many people out there, I, I've, I've just kind of walked alongside uh, having loved ones in the hospital, you can't visit, you can't be there. They're there, they're by themselves. Everyone else is out just kind of waiting anxiously. So just pray for that situation as well. So I would just appreciate that personally. And I know my dad is not the only person, he's not even the only person uh, on our, connected to our church staff. We have staff members that have been in the hospital. We've got uh, spouses of staff members in the hospital this week with, with COVID. So I know it's affecting so many people. So when you're praying for people in COVID, if you would add my dad's name to the list, I would appreciate it. So, all right, let's pray and let's get started for the day. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you so much for your mercy. God, we, we thank you so much that, that you were willing to give. You, you gave to us because you loved us. You, you gave your son. You gave the most precious gift uh, so that we could have a relationship with you. So God, help us to, to live with open hands, uh, living generously as you are generous to us. God, I also lift up those who are sick today just specifically those who are, are, are sick with COVID, uh, who are struggling. God, I just pray for healing for them. I pray for healing for my father. I just pray that uh, as, however you choose to do that, God, you, you heal in so many different ways. God, you heal through um, the medical field. God, you, you gave doctors wisdom. Uh, you gave them the brains that think and come up with plans. God, you were part of every single uh, step along the way of developing treatments, um, God. So whether you heal through that avenue, God, or you heal supernaturally, we will give you all the honor. We just ask that you would move in this area. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I look forward to seeing you 
24 hours from now on the daily race and 25, 26 hours from now at church. Kicking off at the movies. Started at 8 o'clock online in Goodyear, 9.30 in Buckeye. Uh, all the service times are online, but don't come alone. Invite someone. Whether you're inviting someone to attend church online or in person, it's going to be a fun weekend. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a great rest of the day. Love you guys. Take care.